Okay, uh, it's 7.15, so we can start. Uh, hello, folks. Uh, good evening to all, and a uh, very happy Diwali in advance to everyone. Uh, today, we have a team of BitSome. Uh, we have uh, BitSome uh, admissions director with us, uh, Mr. Kishore, uh, uh, Narutam Kishore, and uh, we have three current students from BitSome. Uh, I just introduced Mr. Narutam, uh, so he an ISP alum, alumni and he has already worked in the admissions team of ISP for more than uh, eight years, I guess. Correct me if I'm wrong, sir. And uh, and he has joined from, uh, since its uh, inception. So uh, I think uh, he'll, he'll be giving a presentation about Bitsome admissions and then we'll, uh, we'll get to know about how's life at Bitsome uh, from the current students. So I request uh, Mr. Narutam to uh, go ahead and we'll keep a quite a few in a session uh, in even if uh, somebody has questions before so you can just post your questions in the chat and I'll pick it up from uh, the chat and uh, address them for your opinions. Okay. Uh, Narutam sir, uh, you can go. Thank you Sandeep and good evening everyone. Before I begin, let me share my screen. I have a presentation. I'll start with the presentation and uh, then we will begin. I hope everybody can see my screen. Great. So good evening, everyone. Uh, as Sandeep introduced, my name is Narutam and I'm head of admissions at Bitsong. In this brief 10 minutes talk, I'm going to talk about this new business school, Bit School of Management, and its interesting teaching model that we have. So I'm giving you a brief overview. And after that, we'll move to Q&A where we have three of our founding class students they will be sharing their experiences and also you can ask them questions about their uh, experience at Bitsom. So we'll move to that uh, Q&A uh, after 10 minutes of my presentation. So Bitsom or Bit School of Management is a new business school and it is under, it's promoted by Bits Pilani. So we all know Bits Pilani is a famous engineering college in India with four campuses in India and outside India. But now this is the fifth campus that is, that is there in Mumbai. But this fifth campus is only focused towards management education. So we are offering MBA and other MBA programs to be offered later on. But this uh, Bitsom, Bit School of Management and Bits Pilani is uh, the fifth campus and we are affiliated with Bits Pilani. So what does it mean for you as a student? As a student, it means that you, are, you will be part of Bits Pilani Alumni Association, which means that once you graduate, you can interact, you can be a part of this Bits Pilani Alumni Network and that will help you in your career as you move along in your journey, that's one. Secondly, you'll get MBA degree from Bits Pilani. So again, uh, since we are affiliated with the Bits Pilani, we are part of Bits Pilani, so we are recognized by UGC. So what you're getting is a Bits Pilani MBA. So that's another degree that, that you get, MBA degree, that's part of Bits Pilani. So that's in brief about uh, Bitsom and the relation uh, of Bitsom with Bits Pilani. It's a fifth campus and we are under Bits Pilani uh, University. Now we started Bitsom last year in uh, July, 2021. That's when we started with our founding class. And uh, this year also, we, July, 2022, we had our second cohort. So, so far we have close to 270 students on campus. And I'm going to give you a brief overview of the class profile that we have both for the founding class and of the second cohort that we have built this year. Now in the founding class, when we started last year in July, 2021, we had a class of 138 students and uh, it's a mix of uh, you know, students with uh, great academic background, with great uh, experience, extracurricular and all that. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of the class, the founding class that we have. So in terms of uh, our median CAD, GMAT or GRE, we accept GMAT score. We also accept CAT score or GRE scores. And in terms of median CAT, we had 94, median GMAT is 680, and median GRA is 316. Now this is median, this is not cut off, which means that even if you have scores less than this, 680 less than that, you can still get into our program because we don't have a typical cutoff, what we saw, what we see in typical you know, uh, institute which accept CAT scores. We have a holistic profile evaluation, so we consider your class 12 score, we consider your class uh, undergrad score, we consider your CAT, GMAT or GRE scores and your extracurriculars work experience. So we consider every aspect of the application basically that we give and offer. So that's the key aspect of our application process. And in terms of our uh, 
and students coming from uh, colleges. So we have students in founding class coming from IIT Madras, Roorkee, Betspilani, and so on. And also we have students from international undergrad programs. Now, the point that we're making is that the kind of peer learning that we'll have, it, it will be top class because we have students in the class which come from top uh, institutions and they will add up to your peer learning, peer learning. So that way you are getting great peer experiences by being part of this cohort, which is top class already. Now that's a brief overview of the founding class. Let me talk about the second cohort, the second cohort that we built this year in July, 2022, which started this year. We have a class of 132 students in the second cohort. Cohort. And again, we consider their, uh, it was basically their uh, academics, but basically their extracurriculars and the work experience, if there was any, and you know, uh, all such aspects went into the uh, evaluation of application basis that we admitted that in the class. Now, again, the median CAT of this second cohort we have is 93, median GMAT is 700, and median GRE is 321. Now, again, this is median, this is not a cutoff. So even if you have scores less than these median, that numbers were shown here, but you have other aspects of your application, which is strong enough, you have a very good chance of getting an admit, admit song. So that should give an idea that what can, kind, kind of class we have in the first as well as second cohort. Now again, uh, in the second cohort that we have, we have students from IITs, uh, NITs, Betspilani, Ashoka, and Delhi University, and so on. Now again, it will re-emphasize that the kind of peer learning, the peer ex uh, exposure that you will get truly top class because these 132 students that we have the class, they are have they are kind of achievers in some section or the other, and that way they will contribute to your peer learning. Now, let me talk about what's a teaching model that we have. And it is something interesting that we have, and I'm going to talk about the faculty and the curriculum that we have in this MBA program. Now, if you remember, ISB started in the year. 2001, and when it started, it had a portfolio faculty model, which means that it invited faculty from different B schools across the world, and they came and teach, uh, taught uh, students. The same way, we have a similar faculty model as of now. So we have this faculty model where you get top class faculty coming from NYU Stern or the uh, University of Texas or Kellogg uh, Kellogg School of Kellogg Business School or even Wharton Business School. Those faculty will be coming in India in the class, and they will be teaching one particular course, and that. That way after teaching those courses they'll go back so that way we have a similar faculty model as it was in the beginning of isp and uh, you uh, and that's how you know uh, the faculty model is at bits on so it's a kind of mix of isb and ims because we kind of adopted what ic model that started with and we also have im model in the sense that it's a two-year mba program uh, so it's a mix of I, isb and im and that can give you confidence that the kind of learning the kind of exposure that you'll get Will be top class, and you can have great uh, experience by being part of this bit some cohort that will that is coming up next year in July 2023. In terms of curriculum, we have five different specializations. I will be talking about that. You will be going through 70 plus courses in the in those two years of MBA, and of course, uh, 1600 plus contact hours. Now, the curriculum is designed in such a way that it is set up for your long long term career success. Now, of course, placement is important, but in addition to placement, what we are looking at is that a student which graduate from Bitsom, they kind of succeed in their career in a long-term basis. So for that, we have designed curriculum in the sense that our curriculum has certain one section, which is called winning at the workplace courses. Now, winning at the workplace courses aims at developing your critical thinking skills. These are typically liberal art courses or soft skills courses that will help you uh, make a better decisions because what you learn in a business courses, of course, you learn those operations, management, or even finance or marketing and so on. But you also, these courses are uh, clubbed with the liberal art courses, liberal arts courses or soft skills courses, and that will help you think critically and make you help you make better decisions. So that's what meaning of the workplace courses will be there. So while you're studying one course is business related courses, you will also be studying one course which is related to your liberal arts. So that's what meaning of the workplace courses will be there. Uh, as part of the curriculum, that's one. Secondly, you also get individual attention in the sense that each one of you, each one of our students come from different backgrounds. So for each one of them, we have this personal development plan. So where our faculty will sit with you, understand your strengths and weaknesses, and kind of guide you how you want to spend those two years at Bitsom and how you want to take your journey as you become a Bitsom uh, student. So that's one personal development plan will be assigned for each student. You also have mentorship by industry people. So each student will be assigned one men mentor, industry senior people. And that mentor, you will be reaching out to those mentors and they will be guiding you, mentoring as to how you want to shape your career after you graduate from this program. 
So that's uh, individual attention that you'll get. You also have uh, immersion at LBS in the sense that you, you get to spend two weeks at London Business School in London and uh, uh, go through the courses there. Uh, so in those two weeks, you will be studying uh, courses taught by LBS faculty. So that's something you'll be doing. You'll also be doing a project at LBS uh, 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 under the guidance of LBS faculty. So you get kind of global exposure by being part of those immersion at London Business School. And five specializations that we have, we have five different, uh, one is entrepreneurship, second is e-commerce, third is marketing, fourth is finance, and fifth is leadership and strategy. So you get a chance to specialize in any one of these uh, five different streams in your second year by choosing courses that you want to take on. So these are the brief uh, overview of the curriculum. Of course, you can get into more details by visiting your website. And of course, you can also interact with our students, which are there in the first year as well as second year by connecting with them on LinkedIn and get to know more about their experience about the learnings or pedagogy or the curriculum that they are going through that. Now, a word on the career support, what kind of career support you'll get. Uh, we have this uh, dedicated uh, you know, career services team. Now, BITSOM is only institute or very few institute in India, which offers two-year MBA program. This two-year MBA program has a dedicated placement set. Now, what do I mean by dedicated placement set? Most of the two-year MBA program in India has a placement set which is run by students. But here at Bitsom, it is run by you know, professionals. These, these are like staff of Bitsom and they have the experiences in managing placements in uh, uh, different business schools. So they are the one who, who will be helping you getting summer internship. They are the one who will be getting your final placements and all that. So that, that way we have a dedicated career services team and they will work for your summer internship as well as final placements. So that's something unique that uh, we have at Bitsom the team which is dedicated for your success after you graduate from this program. Now this career services team will not only get companies on campus and help you get into summer internship final placement, but they will also bring case study competitions or deep plan competition on campus through the connects network that they will build, uh, we build with the corporates. We also source live projects from industry. So as a part of the curriculum, you get a chance to work on projects uh, real life projects given by companies. So these live projects we bring on campus and you form a team of four to five students and that way you work on those live projects. So again, this career service team will bring those uh, projects on campus and you get a chance to work on those projects. Now, last year of the founding class, these are the company that visited our campus for the summer internships. And uh, these are like top tier one uh, uh, companies visiting our campus and uh, our students, founding class students went for the internship this year. And uh, yeah, so uh, this the list will keep getting added as we move to the second year and so on. You will see more number of companies participating in our summer internships as well as final placements. As I'm talking, our summer internship for the second cohort has already begun and it is looking very promising. In a month or so, you will get to know about uh, summer internship statistics of the second cohort that we are currently going through. Now, this is the stats of the founding class summer internship. The average stipend for the two month summer internship was 1.61 lakhs. And uh, if you look at the average stipend, the top 10% of the class was three, uh, three lakhs, and top 30% of the class was 2.6 lakhs, and top 50% of the class was 2.29. Our campus is in Pawai right now in Mumbai. And uh, this is a city campus. Eventually, we will move to Kalyan campus. The plan is to move to Kalyan campus in December 2023. So the class will join next year in 2023. First six months, they will be in city campus in Hawaii. And probably in December 2023 onwards, they will be moving to a permanent campus that is coming up in Kalyan, the construction of which has already started. And it, it is expected to be ready by October number of next year. If you are in Mumbai, I would encourage you to visit our city campus in Hawaii and uh, you can register yourself. You can go to the website and uh, register yourself and you can visit our campus. And one of us admission officers or students will be there to orient you about the experience that they're going through and what all, uh, you know, what all you need to go through if you want to apply to Bitsom MBA program. Now, in terms of advisory body, we have uh, Mr. Kumar Mangla Birla. He's a chancellor of Bitsplani. He's a chairman of Adit Birla Group. And he is kind of uh, very much involved in making sure that Bitsom succeeds because for him, it's a passion project. And if you get to apply to Bitsom, it may happen that you may be interviewed by him also because he's taking a lot of interest 
in making sure that this school does well. So that way you have a lot of support from these people who are part of this advisory body and they will be setting up the strategic direction of the school. And uh, these are like top academicians and even industry people, and they are guiding us, helping us move forward. In terms of admission process, we have uh, online application submissions. So you can visit our website. If you have your uh, GMAT test scores ready, you can go and submit your applications. Once you submit your applications, we will review your application. And after that, you're shortlisted for interview. And uh, after the interview, um, interview admission offer is made. So we begin our process of uh, interviews from November onwards. And if you submit by round one, which is November 20th deadline that we have, you will get to know about that result in the month of December. Now, these are the different components of the application. We look at your academics of your class 10th, 12th, undergrad, and uh, uh, these are the academics uh, we look at. We also look at your GMAT score, or if you have taken CAT in 2022, this year, or if you've taken GRE in last five years. So those are the aptitude test scores we look at. We look at your achievements, extracurricular activities. That's another important aspect of your application. We look at your essays and work ex internships if you have. All the work ex and internships is not so mandatory, but if you have that will add up to your application and one letter of recognition that we also look at. So all these six components go into making a strong applications. We would encourage you to reach out to us, reach out to admissions officers at Bitsom and get your profile evaluated. I'll be, I will be sharing a link of those profile evaluation where you can connect with Bitsom admission officers and they can guide you, mentor you in terms of how you can make your application strong and submit a strong application so that you have a good chance of making it to the interview round. This is our deadline uh, for the round one. September, we started our applications uh, and the 20th of November is the round one deadline. If you apply by 20th of November, it will be the test score that you have, you will get to know about your results in the month of December. And uh, the program begins on 26th of June, 2023. So these are a few contacts. Uh, you can reach out to us at admissions at bitsum.edu.in or you can reach out to our counselors on this contact number. And if you have, if you want to take our guidance suggestions, you can register a slot for the profile evaluation by visiting this web our admissions page on the Bitsum website. And one of us will be there to help you, guide you in submitting our strong applications. So with that, I conclude my short talk about Bitsum. I will give it back to Sandeep. Sandeep, over to you. Uh Thank you, Nagato. Uh, that was a great presentation. Now I'd, I'd move on to the founding students uh, to know how is their life at Pitsum, uh, how has been their life at Pitsum since last one and a half year, I guess. So, uh, and uh, what what are the factors uh, an applicant needs to keep in mind? Uh, like what, what did you have in your profile different or maybe uh, you think was, uh, you know, a tiebreaker for you. So can uh, you take that up? Uh, we'll, we'll start with Akash. Yeah, so hi, I'm Akash. And in terms of uh, unique factors, I think the essay plays a really good role. So in my essay, I was basically talking about my life experience and what uh, got me from where I was before to where I am now, uh, just before the application process. And it was really important to keep it as candid as possible to show the evaluators also how you're going through, uh, how you're tackling problems in your life, because MBA is all about solving problems. And if you can showcase that through your essays, uh, along with any academic achievements and extracurricular activities, all those plays a very big uh, role in how you can uh, get your profile up there to one of the top few profiles we have. Right, right. Uh, would any of you like to add to this? Or, uh, yeah, just adding to that, I think what also helps is a holistic profile in terms of competitions you've participated in or sports events that you've participated in and won. Uh, that really helps build your profile because it's not just about your score. It's about everything else that you bring to the table and all your other experiences that you've had. Okay. Uh, Arvind? Yeah, so the thing that worked for me was pretty much the same. Uh, for me, I think the extracurricular activities played out for the most part. And uh, that is something they played a, a major role while evaluating the profile. And the thing about uh, Bitsom is they evaluated the profile holistically, respect of, you know, you have to submit all your scores. And when they're trying to evaluate your profile holistically, then... Uh, you can try to... So... People are cleaning it up. One second.
you can move on to the next question please so i can uh, answer yeah, it. so uh, the next question is like uh, what is more important networking is more important grades are more important what have you found out, uh, in in your you know in your at which zone that what is more important in terms of you know uh, getting into the top uh, maybe top getting to top placements or getting top uh, in your class what is more important? Uh, I think both go hand in hand because grades okay. signal your academic pro progress in your batch and network will signal how well you do after you leave the college. And a lot of people say that your real net worth in your uh, MBA degree is the network you make. And the network which you're making currently at Bitsong is huge because we're connecting with the Bits alumni, we're connecting with mentors all around the world, we're connecting with faculty all around the world. And all of these connections are just enabling us to maintain these ties because after the block ends, it's a, it's a two week block program. And even after the block ends, I'm still in contact with most of the professors who taught me in the first year. And we keep bouncing ideas with each other and so on. So yeah, in terms of uh, my perspective, both of them play a really big role. Yeah. So yeah, I will also say the same. Uh, I'm not going to differ from that. Uh, with regards to the mentorship program, I'll just touch upon that. The mentorship program that we have in Bitsom actually helped me realize a lot of things. Say that when you're having someone who's so experienced in their profile, uh, about 30 or 40 odd, 40 odd years of experience saying VP of marketing in a very reputed company. And if he's going to guide you through while you're taking decisions about which specialization that you're going to choose, you know, that plays a long way when you're trying to understand yourself and as well as you know making best use of the program. Okay. Okay, so uh, next is like, uh, how is Bitsome in terms of if you want to make a career shift or, or an industry shift, if you are uh, someone coming in with uh, maybe two uh, to five years of experience in, in a particular field. So, ha I mean, have you, have any of you got your summer internships in, in a different uh, domain or different industry than you, uh, what you were already working in? Uh, first of all, like, uh, are you all freshers or uh, with uh, some years of experience? So we all have experience. Uh, and uh, so I think industry experience kind of helps you with understanding the classes better. Uh -huh. uh, you just tend to connect a little better. But having said that, there are a lot of freshers in the batch and there are a lot of people with a lot of experience in the batch. Um, there are a lot of people who are trying to transition from different roles than they previously were in. For example, about myself, I come, I was working in the automotive industry before. Uh, I had interned with Cisco during my summers and I worked in the project management role. So that transition was possible. So it is possible. Uh, yeah, so that's basically my answer. Okay. Uh, uh, same for me. So I joined Bitsom with three years of uh, work ex in the fintech industry as a software engineer. Uh -huh. And uh, in Bitsom, through Bitsom, I got an internship in Aditya Pillar Group. And that was basically on HR, which is a complete uh, shift from IT. Right. And yeah, so that's possible with Bitsom. Thank you. And uh, like... Uh... Uh, are you feeling left out that they, I mean, the new batches are going to be in the new campus next year? Like, uh, how is your current campus at the moment? So, I mean, how have you visited the new campus? How is it different from the current campus? We had uh, visited the campus during the Bhumi Puja, and uh, and which we also have a glimpse of the campus right now. And oh. obviously, being the founding class is going to be having the whole, having its own perks. We'll be right. able to visit the campus anytime, and we'll yeah. be mark for ourselves. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have one question from the chat also that uh, yeah, is Bitso a target B school for MBB and other tier one consulting firms? If you uh, I mean know about it. So I think we have already seen in the placement, I mean, recruit uh, names of recruiters in the presentation which Narutam shared, right? Uh, if you would like to add in that, Narutam. I can add that. So yes, uh, it is a target school. So in our summer internship, BCG came. In our summer internship this year, Bain also came. 
McKinsey will come for the final placements. And we also have top other consulting firms like Carney, AD Little. So very few MBA schools in India, you'll find where all these top consulting firms go. And the very fact that uh, in a first year and a second year also, all these top consulting firms coming on our campus and recruit, recruiting students from it. So that says a lot about the quality of the students and the quality of learning that students are getting. So that way, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that way we are proud of the fact that industry have recognized uh, our uh, teaching industry, have recognized our curriculum, and that way they're coming and recruiting students for our campus. So yes, it is the target uh, tier one college for the, I mean, consulting firm like making CBC, and b Okay, right, right. Uh, so we have one person who has raised and uh, just let me him. Uh, Anish, can you go ahead? Question. Yeah, hi, thanks indeed. Thanks, and welcome. So, yeah, I had asked this question related to whether Witsom is a target school for MBB firms. So, on that note only, so I wanted to know if we have data available in terms of how many students applied and were able to make it because this is generally available for, for other top B schools in the website, but I was not able to find this on Witsom. So, in terms of summer internships, uh, like last year, we had uh, two students going to Bain and Company. And this year, process is still on. So we have BCG recruited a few people. Uh, Bain recruited a few people. McKinsey will come for the final placements. So you will get to know about the final placement uh, or summary internship report of this year by some time, because the process is still going on. Uh, Bain and BCG already come. McKinsey will come for the final placements. So by end of December this year, you will get uh, some detailed information about the companies coming on campus and re recruiting. Also, uh, like last year, like Bain came and recruiting the student, they also get PPO. So we have, uh, you know, PPOs also from uh, Bain and Company for our founding class students. So that way, they have converted. Uh, they found our quality of students really good, and that's why they gave PPO. So yeah. I hope. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, okay. Next one is for the students. How is the culture at uh, campus, like clubs, other activities, etc. Uh, Akash. Uh, so since we're in the founding batch, we had the privilege to create our own culture at Bitsom. And we started off with a lot of fun activities. We have, uh, so one thing I really appreciate about Bitsom is even at the heights of COVID, they kept all of us together and there was no outbreak or anything. Everything was managed seamlessly. And because all of us were in one location, uh, we were bonding from day one where other colleges used to be uh, online and then took time to come to campus and then start bonding. So our culture and our uh, events and the clubs and everything started out from day one itself. And we have a pretty fun culture because it's almost like a startup culture where energies are high, ideas are flowing around everywhere. Any new initiative from every club is appreciated. And every other day, we'll have one of, one of the other clubs starting a session or a spotlight or something to sharpen our MBA night. So, and it's not just the academics part, even the fun part, we have sports club uh, hosting tournaments like football, and we had our own mini premier leagues as well in the campus. And uh, apart from that, we also have the gym facilities, swimming and all of that. So we have our own mini competitions among each other. So the culture is uh, pretty amazing and it's not fixed as of now. So that's another important perk. So it can adapt to anyone and as more people come in, the culture will keep changing, especially because we're a new college. Okay. okay. So would you like to add yeah, all that thing? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Also that the clubs aren't fixed either. Uh, so we've had our juniors come in and add more clubs. So that kind of says that these new aspirants who come in can also come and start a club that they don't think exists in the batch currently. So yeah. Okay, uh, so Ankita is asking, hi, I have a eight uh, plus years of experience with uh, PwC, NGO business, and now an FMCG startup, the sales and marketing role. I don't have any tech background. What are my chances with product management post MBA? Uh, Ankita, right? So yeah. Ankita, maybe it's better that, so we have this optional profile eval. We need to go, we need to look at your profile in detail and then probably we need to understand your experience much better. It will be very difficult for me to give a general answer. I need to understand more about you. So there's an option of profile evaluation on our website. I would encourage you to 
pick a slot there and one of our admission officer will connect with you and go through your profile and then probably can guide you what are your chances and how you got what all you can do to get into the career that you're looking at so uh yeah i encourage you to take that uh, option and then uh, one of us will connect with you and then we can have a you know one-on-one -on -one conversation on that okay so, so uh i would request everyone to please raise their hands and come on uh the camera also while you ask questions uh, it would be interactive for us and you as well so uh that's it and yeah uh, I, uh, in the same line I, uh, I also wanted to ask like how is bitsum for uh, people with more than five years of experience uh, uh what you know wanting to join a two-year regular mba program? i mean there are people in the founding class we have people of eight years of work experience also okay. um, but the average work experience of the class is two years uh, in the founding class as well as in the second cohort that we have now it's up to you. I mean, if you if you think that, uh, so essentially people with five and above years, you will have probably less uh, number of people who, who will have similar kind of work experience, similar number of work experience in terms of uh, years, but they will be people. And we don't have any kind of strict criteria that anybody above five or six uh, will not get an admission, all that. We look at good candidates and if they meet all the criteria, well, uh, but yes, I mean, there are people, as I said, you know, five years of experience, six years of experience, even eight years of work experience in the class. And that way, if you want to uh, get into this uh, program, you, you you are eligible, then you can go ahead and apply for this program. Right, right. Okay. So Naman is also asking, can you please share the profile evaluation link? Okay, I'll, uh, while uh, the students are answering question, I'll share. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I have one more question for you only that what will be the tentative timeline for round two? Uh, also, will there be any drawback if we apply in round two? So the timeline for round two will be uh, around January 22nd, third week of January. The only drawback that you'll have in round two is that competition become intense. Uh, in round one, I mean, you have entire seats. We are, we are looking for 140, 150 class uh, for the next cohort. If you apply by round one, then of course, uh, competition is less. Uh, but if you apply in round two, because a lot of people from CAT uh, segment also will apply in round two and GMAT also you apply in round two. So your competition become less, uh, competition become more in round two. So that's the only disadvantage. Hmm. Uh, but yes, if you plan to take GMAT later, you don't have any choice but to submit to application round two. So yeah. Uh, otherwise, there's no other difference in terms of evaluation of your application and uh, you know, getting an admission offer. If you are a good candidate, of course, you will get the offer. But yeah, you realize that in round two, competition will be more than round one. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, next question is to the students that how do you feel that uh, the diversity is there in the class, you know, while the case discussions or the classroom discussions, how do you feel diversity wise that? Is it adding the class, adding value to the class, or how is it? Can you elaborate on that? Can I take this question? Yeah, yeah sure. All right. So I'm from a technical background, a UI UX designer. Okay. The after that, I've been trying to specialize in finance. Like I've been doing mergers and acquisitions course, and this uh, is you know the profile of you know what the importance of diversity comes into the class. So I've been working with CAs. I've been working with you know, commerce graduates, they've been trying to help me inculcate most of the stuff that I'm not able to, you know, whenever they're, when I'm finding it difficult to understand it in the class, it is them who was helping me out. And one other thing is when the study groups are formed, they make sure that there is some level of diversity when it is, you know, pertaining to a certain subject. So yes. diversity definitely plays a role. And this is something of recent example that I had to bring it up. Uh, Namya or Akash, if you want to add something, you can. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. All right. So, um, uh, in terms of diversity aspect, I think there is a balance. Everyone is either a math person or like good at literature. So there's always that balance that the study group creates, where you're able to do assignments that are essay based and assignments that are math based. So there is a flow of information that takes place and everybody understands everything better. I was someone who was not very good at writing. And I think over time I can say uh, I've developed an affinity for writing and I'm getting better at it through the assignments and learning through people who have been there in the cohort. So, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah, similar experience for me as well. So most of the education we have is through case studies and mm -hmm. other uh, business problems which are currently going on in the market. And when you have a diverse cohort of architects, uh, doctors, engineers, as well as CAs, commerce students and everyone, each of them will offer a unique perspective on their own expertise on how they are viewing as a problem or something like that. So instead of narrowing into the technical aspects of how we solve a case like a typical engineering student, we'll start looking at a holistic way of a 360 degree approach of basically seeing all the angles so that we can get a better solution. Okay, okay. Thanks. Thanks for the answer. Uh, yeah, uh, so Anish is asking what is the average work experience of 21 and 22 cohort? I think he's asking for 23 and 24 cohort. Yeah, so average work in the 21, 22 cohort is two years. And okay. even for the next cohort that we have is also close to two years. So as of now, but the range is from, let's say, zero years of work experience till, you know, eight years of work experience. That's the range. But okay. the average comes to two years, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, Sutman is asking, is GMAT score required at the time of submitting application or we can send that data? You can submit your application without your score. But it will not be considered complete. It will be considered complete only when you submit your GMAT score. So we will evaluate your application only when you have your test scores available with us. Uh, so you have two options. Either you submit your application now, and once your score is there, then you submit your score, and then it will be considered complete. Or once you have taken your uh, test, once your score is there, then you can submit your applications. Uh, but we'll evaluate your applications only when the, we have your final, all the components of your application ready. And that's when we go ahead and evaluate your applications. But in any case, like score needs to be submitted before 20th of uh, November, right? Score, I mean, uh, no. So that is round one. They will have round two also. The round two deadline will be around January third week. Uh, so by that time, if you have your scores ready, you can submit your scores and submit your application by that time. So even if you submit your application in R1, but submit the scores after R1 deadline, so it will be considered for is that? Correct. It will consider R2 because your application is still incomplete. Even incomplete. If you submit it in so it will yeah. consider it in round two. Yes. Okay. And, and yeah, uh, I had one question that like it has with so many, uh, it's a very far-fetched question, but it has with so many plans of starting a one-year program just like the other B schools or Eventually we will start, but not now. Once we move to a permanent campus in Kalyan, we will start. But the timeline we have not yet uh, decided when will it happen. Our focus is to consolidate our first two-year MBA program. Okay. Once we have established, once we have done well, then probably we'll move to different programs like short-term program or even one-year program, but not in the near future. Our focus is on two-year MBA program and we want to consolidate that, then eventually move to, you know, First year, I mean, one year MBA program later on. But as of now, no such plans uh, to start in the near future, but sometime later, it, it will happen, yes. Okay, okay. And interviews are going to be uh, offline this year or? No, interviews are going to be online this year again, uh, because we see a lot of conveniences uh, in online interviews. So we will yeah. continue with online interview this year also. Right. So whichever part of the country you are or in the world you are, you can attend interviews from your home because it's going to be online. Uh, okay, so Ananta is asking, can we submit the application with unofficial scores in case we are taking the exam closer to the deadline date and official scores might take some time? Uh, will yes, this yes. still be considered in R1? That's it will consider in R1, yes. Okay. You can do that. Okay. okay. So on to the students, uh, I'll just ask you what is the advice you want to give to the prospective applicants? Like what uh and, you know what should they do? Uh, what should they work upon? Uh, should it be? Uh, should it? Should they work upon uh, extracurricular activities or uh, achievements at their workplace? And yeah, I mean before uh, before starting your MBA, also if you had worked something which helped in your MBA program, so what would you like? To... Uh, Akash, you can. So I think first thing, uh, Narutam shared the link of the profile evaluation, right? So every student will have a different uh, profile uh, who's applying to Bitsum. Uh, some of them might have really good ACAD, some might have really good work X. So if 
since the option is available to everyone, uh, utilize that so you you know exactly what you have to work on. Because in general, uh, we can say work on your extracurriculars or ACADs you can't really work on now unless you are still in college. And work X, uh, if you are going to join the next MBA cohort, you only have three or four months. Thanks. So the maximum we can tell you is look at the profile, see what's what you're lacking in terms of what companies uh, coming into the internship and the, the final placements are looking for in different profiles and then guide you uh, specifically one-on-one -on -one so that you get a more customized uh, advice on what exactly you should be working on. Okay. Okay. For any one of you that you add, oh, that's it. Okay. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to ask like how, how uh, if, if someone gets rejected, then uh, and they uh, request a sense team to give a feedback on that profile. Uh, of course, profile evaluation is of course there. But after being rejected, uh, do they provide the reason uh, why they have been rejected? Yes. So last year, let's say if somebody has applied and they're not able to get selected, you can reach out, you can send an email at admissions at bitsom.edu.in and ask for the feedback. One of our team members will respond to you and give you specific feedback, what happened and where you could have improved to make your application better. So that uh, uh, option is there. So take that opportunity and that will give you feedback and that way you can make your application stronger for the next year. Okay. Uh, similar to those times, is there any weightage given to particular weightage to the interview, the application, the scores, or I mean, is it disclosed by? So there are different components. Uh, there academics is one component. Uh, your aptitude okay. test score is another component. Essay is another component. Uh, work experience, if you have that as a component, then interview also has a different component. Each component has different weightages. Now, no schools okay. will tell you what weightage is assigned to different uh, components, but yes. Uh, as I said, it's a holistic profile evaluation, even if you're not good in academics, right? Let's assume that. Okay. If you do well in extracurricular, if you do well in interviews, you still have a good chance of making it through. So it's a different aspect of the application that we go through and uh, uh, basically that admission offer is made. So, yeah, I mean, uh, if you're not good in academics, if you can tell us why, what happened in your undergrad, or what happened in your class 12, and yeah. uh, did you compensate that by doing something else? So if you have that done really right. well in your extracurriculars and all that, that will add up to your application uh, uh, and that can brighten your chance of getting the admission offer. Yeah. Uh, Sukhman Deep is asking, uh, any pointers uh, for a good day? Like what should be, what the essay should be about, what ad form of a bit so, uh, look at and what should the tone of an essay uh, be like? Yeah, so if you go to on YouTube, there's a Bitsom video, uh, go to Bitsom channel, and there's a video done by one of our ancient team members, Sampurna, and she has talked about uh, what is it that we look at while evaluating our essays. I can share that link here also. Uh, uh, I'll share it in the chat box. Uh, you can go through that video, and that gives a very detailed instruction about what is it that you should work on while you are writing your essays. So I'll share that link, but in the meantime, we have any other questions you can ask and in the, uh, I'll be sharing that link here. Uh, uh, I would just request the audience to come up with any questions if they have, uh, otherwise we are close to 8 p.m. So yeah, uh, I don't think, I don't see any questions in the chat. Okay, you have already, okay, someone has already posted the link of the video. Thank you. That, yeah, uh, I think that's a uh, do you have any remarks? Yeah, so let me talk about what is it that we look at uh, while evaluating any application. So we look at three things. Huh. First thing that we look at, we look at your academic excellence in the sense that now why we look at your academics? Uh, because MBA curriculum, even Bitsom curriculum is rigorous. So we need that confidence that any person who's taking admission to Bitsom, they will be able to handle that figure of the program. Now we get that confidence only by looking at your academic background. So if you have not, let's say, if you have your good academic background you know, uh, in your class 12th or undergrad, that's good, that add up to your strength of your application. But if you don't have a good academic background in terms of your uh, class 12th or undergrad, try to get a good score in your GMAT score because that will add up, that will kind of give a you know, uh, signal to us that, okay, even if you don't have good academics, but if you have good GMAT score, we, we get a sense that this person will be able to handle the rigor of the program. So that's what we are looking at. We're looking at your academic excellence. So that's one point 
uh, we look at. The second point, point that we look at is your extracurricular activities. If you have taken up any leadership roles, if you have taken up any initiatives, have you created any impact? That's the second aspect uh, that we look at while evaluating your application. So talk about your extracurriculars, talk about your impact, what impact you have created, talk about any initiative you have taken up, which has made a difference that will add up to your application uh, strength. So that's the second thing that we are looking at. And the third thing, the final thing that we look at is your uniqueness. Now, why uniqueness? Because the peer learning is an important component of your MBA uh, class, MBA learning. So the idea is to each one of you who is their part of the Bitsong cohort, each one of you get to learn from each of your classmates. Now that learning will happen only when people coming from different background, uh, some uniqueness that they bring along. So if you have some uniqueness, uh, which you think can add up to the peer learning, which can add up to your peer experiences, that will again make your application stronger. So essentially three things that we look at while evaluating applications, one, your academics, second is your uh, extracurricular activities, and third is your uh, uniqueness. And try to bring those things out with, uh, in your essays, in your letter of recommendations, in your interviews, all these things, if you try to bring that out, that will brighten your chance of getting an admission offer. So that's, I hope that will help you in getting, submitting a strong applications and getting an offer and bit so. Right. That surely will help. Okay, uh, so we are uh, at the end of the session. Uh, I think everybody loved that session. Uh, it was a lovely presentation and uh, I mean, a very good brief about the life at Bitsom and the admission process as well. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.